Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we will talk about autoloader. And inside autoloader, we will talk about a specific mode known as file detection mode. So in the last video, if you remember, I have discussed about the two different modes available in the autoloader. The first one is a directory listing mode and the other one is a file notification mode. The directory listing mode is a default mode, which I already explained in my previous video. So in this video, we will be mostly focusing on the file notification mode. So let's get started how it actually works. So when I say file file detection mode, it basically it basically use the Azure events. Okay. So what happens is in a layman terms, when the file comes into the storage container, what file detection mode will do? It will create a basically an event green system topic. Okay. It will create a topic and inside the topic, it will create one subscription. Okay. Inside the subscription or based on this subscription, one queue will be created. And from this queue, basically autoloader, I mean, basically autoloader will be notified that this file has been arrived. Start reading this file. Okay. Now the question comes in our mind is like, who will be creating these things? System topic, grid subscription or queue. So these all things will be handled by autoloader itself. You don't have to perform any additional steps here. But yes, you have to, you have to basically, there are few prerequisites, I would say, and you have to give those prerequisites or you have to basically pass those configurations while using autoloader for file detection mode. Okay, so let, let's quickly take a look what all things will be required as in a prerequisite and what all configurations will be required to use autoloader with the file detection. Okay, let me move to the next slide quickly. Yeah, so if you see here, the first, okay, here we are talking about the prerequisites, right, in the autoloader for the file detection mode. So when I say prerequisite, first of all, what we have to do is we have to assign a contributor role, okay, and storage queue data contributor role, both the roles to your storage location, okay, maybe your ADLS or blob or whatever it is, okay. Once you assign this role, after this, the next step is, or the next prerequisite is, you need to assign event grid, event subscription contributor role to the resource group. Okay. And once these things are done, you assign these kind of uh, roles like contributor or storage queue data contributor or event grid, right? On your storage, uh, on your resource group. And this one is on your storage account, right? Make sure you are assigning these roles. Once you assign these roles, the next part is to create your configurations, okay, to use the file notification mode. So when I say configuration, there are a few things which are really required. See, generally you pass, like what kind of formats you are gonna read. So this is a CSV, right? It can be changed. You can use Excel or you can use whatever formats you are using, maybe JSON or Parquet or whatever it is. So it is fine, right? It's a, it's a basic things, right? We generally use it when we read that file. Then we talk about schema location. So schema location here refers to a location where autoloader will be saving your schema. It will save the information related to the schema, okay, in a particular location. So you have to pass this location to the autoloader. After this, these are the configurations which needs to be given to autoloader, okay, in order to create those subscriptions, topics, and queue and everything, right? You have to pass subscription ID. Okay, then you have to pass SAS ID, then tenant ID, client ID, client secret, a source group name, right? So you have to pass all these informations. Okay, once you pass all these informations, there is one more option, which name is use notification. Okay, and this is the most important one, guys. So when I say use notification, it means I am saying autoloader to use basically file notification mode okay so this is the place or this is the option or configuration by which autoloader comes to know that okay i have to use basically file notification mode if you don't provide this option it will go with the default mode known as directory mode okay so this is an important 
option. So you have to create this configuration. Okay, maybe you can create an object out of it. Okay, and you can pass this object into your reading stream uh, line. Okay, so let me show you that when you are reading this file. So here, if you see here, spark dot read stream format, and I'm saying cloud files. So see these guys. This is again when I say cloud files, it means I'm talking about the auto load. That's how Databricks understand that we wanted to use the auto load. Okay. Now here, if you see here, I am passing all those configurations. Okay. So basically, I am saying that use all these options which are present in this particular object, the configuration object which we created just now. Okay. And then load the data from this location. Okay, so once the data is loaded, right, we will create and write streaming. Okay, we will perform write streaming. So if you see here, again, we will pass the checkpoint location where the checkpoint needs to be created. What kind of, how basically you wanted to have the data in your output location, right? Is, is it a append or absurd or what kind of data it is? Okay, so let me quickly switch over to the Databricks notebook. And I'll show you how these things happen. But before this, I will show you one minute. Yeah, I will show you the topic and the subscription. Yes. So if you see here, this is an even grid topic. Okay. Inside this, you can see there are two subscriptions already available. Okay. And if I go to my storage account and if I go to queue, you will see two queues are already there. Okay, which are created earlier when I was running this. Okay, so now when I start running this, okay, and if you see my data, right, I have these two files available in two different folders. Let me delete this one. So I have one folder sample files and I have another folder temp directory. And in both the folders, I have one one files. So I wanted to read both the files from these folders. Now, if you see my Databricks notebook, the first notebook I'm invoking or running, it is related to the SPN configurations, okay? So I'm creating a, uh, basically I'm, I'm, I'm accessing the ADRS using the SPN here inside this notebook. And then this is the notebook where I am, I have all, the, all those informations which I needed for the configuration, right? My subscription ID, my connection strings, my tenant ID, right? So everything is stored in this particular notebook. Let me run it. Okay. So all the various variables will be assigned. Now, if you see here, I have three source data locations. One is for specific temp folder. One is for specific sample files, right? But you wanted to invoke all the folders for all the folders, again, star. And for all the files which are ending with CSV, again, you use star. So go inside this folder in this container and then check in all the folders, all the files which are ending with CSV. That's what it means. So I'll be using source location to read all the, both of the files from both of the folders, okay? And for the, uh, and, and I will show you currently, let me show you in this way, direct. Okay, let me show you what all files are available. It will give you the list. As you can see, we have one folder sample file, we'll have one folder temp directory, as I was showing you, right? So currently we have only two folders. But but as soon as I start reading and writing, you will see a couple of folders arriving in that particular location. So we'll we'll take a look out of this, of this. But again, there is more locations. One is target data location. It means I will be storing my data while writing the stream into autoloader folder, you can say output folder or whatever you want, you can create. It will create on the fly. And then I'm saying one checkpoint folder where Databricks or autoloader will keep all the information. Okay. And then the schema location where the schema will be stored. Okay. Schema, let's say you can put anything to your folder. So once the file set up, the paths are already set up. Here, if you see, I am directly, <clears throat> I'm using cloud file, it means auto loader, and then I'm passing all those options here. Okay. And I'll start read stream function here. So as soon as the start read stream started, 
for net location schema location is not available i think i forgot to run this let me run it and let's see this one now okay so as soon as the start stream function will start you will see one folder is being created in this particular container known as schema okay so schema will be captured by auto loader as soon as start streaming start working okay but if you see as of now you will not see any topics any subscription any events anything okay still there are two. topics are two queues are two okay now let's start writing the data again if you see i am saying my checkpoint path is here and it, this is mandatory guys if you don't provide checkpoint it will give you an error my output mode is append it means i will be appending the data not overriding okay and then this is the location where i wanted to save it so let's run it and in as soon as i start running it you will see the queue is created and this queue name has a specific id which id is also present in the subscription level event subscription see so these this is the way they both are linked with this id but from where this id is coming this id is coming from the database itself see this is a run id so that's how these things are associated and all these informations are present in the checkpoint location okay so what does it mean it's present in the checkpoint location it means if i'm relearning the files which are present in the same folder okay the same type of files then it will use the same subscription same topic okay if it is not there if the checkpoint is not there for that specific folder for that specific container okay then it will create a new subscription as well as queue the way it is created now okay so let me show you guys what i will do okay let, let it let it read first okay and we'll see how much data we have in the output location you'll see the spikes right uh, let's see how much data it already read yes 20 records in both the files i have 10 10 records so the total is 20 so what i will do i'll, I'll stop the execution now okay now everything is stopped okay what i will do i'll add one more and you will see the other files are created also the checkpoints the output right what i will do in this temp folder i will add one more file so let's say this one. now we have three files right and this is the new file only now see the the the, the best part of auto loader right now it will read the new file only not the ones which are already there because this information is already there in the checkpoint so i'll start again my auto loader with all the configurations with everything and this time i'll not use this option you can use this but i wanted to show you the other way also by which i was creating i was keeping everything in an object called configuration and then passing this object instead of uh passing this information separately with the option i'm using options with the object here okay so let me use this it's up to you the way you wanted to keep your code so it is done right and let's run the right stream and we will see the run id it should be same see it used the same run id right that's where the magic running inside right so this is using the same run id and based on same run id it will find out which file came newly okay it will check with that particular checkpoint what all files are already processed what are left and once it will start executing you will see the final output as 30. so this is how it actually works and and, and guys if if i if i delete this right Let's say if I delete this particular folder, let's say checkpoint, I will delete this folder. And let me stop it. Okay, it's already stopped. 
Let me delete this. So now the reference is deleted between the checkpoint and between these IDs, the queue and the subscription ID. So what I have to do is now, one minute. Yeah. So the reference is deleted. So these queues and this particular subscription is an orphan subscription now. Okay. So what it will do, what does it mean? When I start running all these cells again, it will create a new subscription, new queue and everything. Okay. So let's see how it works. I'll use the same code again. One minute, guys. I think I forgot to stop at that time. Let me see if it's created. No. Okay. So what I will do, I'll just clear the state and output everything. Okay. And I'll just rerun it. And if you see that the folder is not there. Okay, the checkpoint folder is not there, the queue is there, and the subscription is there. Let me run this again, just to show you guys how it will create the new subscription. Yeah, start running. So let's see now the ID, which ID it will come, which ID comes now. See, 92AA. And there is no such ID as of now. So if you refresh it, you will see the new ID, 92AA. Same goes with the queue as well. 92AA. So this is how auto loader works in a file notification mode. So I hope this video will be helpful for you guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.